You know, a lot of people come up to me and they ask me, Marco, what is it that motivates you most? And to answer their question, I reply back with a question. I say, what if I told you that you had one week left to live? Would you regret not pursuing your dreams, passions, and desires? Would you regret not living your life to the fullest? Would you regret not spending as much time with your family, friends, or loved ones? You know, Steve Jobs said in a speech one time that he used to wake up every morning, look in the mirror, and ask himself questions like this. And he said that if the answer was yes for too many days in a row, then he knew that he had to change something. And that should go for all of us. If you're living a life that you would not be okay with losing because you weren't able to do things you wanted to do, then now you know that you need to change something. Life is simply too short and unpredictable to not live exactly the way that you please. It is ridiculously unpredictable. It is possible that on any given day to die at any point throughout that day without ever being able to see it coming. You know, when I was 13, I had this teacher who was an absolutely amazing person. I had known him for several years then, and he had two kids, a loving wife. He was a man of God, contributed to the community. He gave us everything that he had, and he would bike to school every single day. I, I always remember him coming to school on his bike, and one morning on his way to school, it was early in the morning, he was crossing an intersection. A reckless driver comes out of nowhere, hits him, he dies on the spot, on the moment of impact. His death taught me so many valuable things in life. And one of them being that it went on to show that no matter how much you don't deserve to die, and no matter how good of a person you are, and no matter what your situation is, no matter anything, it goes to show that death is inevitable and random, and it will eventually consume each and every single one of us, whether it's in 50 years, in 10 years, next year, or even tomorrow. You cannot control it, the people around you cannot control it. As long as you're at the wrong place, at the wrong time, your whole life could disappear in the blink of an eye, along with everything you wished you could have done. Whether you're walking down the street, whether you're stepping into the elevator, whether you're walking down the stairs, whether you're, whether you're just existing, listen, you'll see people from nowhere die of a heart attack, gone. No family history, no symptoms, no causes, nothing. It happens and that's the cruel life that we live in and it's something that we cannot control so what I want to make clear is that regardless of the path that you take in your life at one point death will consume you it doesn't care whether you floss your teeth in the morning whether you raise a family or not whether you go on to be rich poor a success a failure whether whatever you are still going to die at one point it is that simple and knowing that you're going to die soon should be the biggest motivation to both make the difficult decisions in life and to get your ass out of bed in the morning. So now the question becomes, what is it that you truly have to lose? If you pursue your dreams and you fail, sure you might be a little bit more financially unstable. You might experience stress or other feelings you wish you never had to experience. But either way, even if you fail, you will end up back to where you started, which is where you are now. So what do you literally have to lose? Some of you right now, you're thinking about maybe starting a business. You have a great idea that you want to incorporate into your lifestyle. Maybe you're thinking about pursuing your dreams to the fullest. Maybe you're thinking about putting in the work to become a doctor, an engineer, a firefighter, a professional athlete. But some of you won't follow these ambitions because you're afraid. You're afraid to fail, you let the fear of failure dictate your actions, and you're afraid of what mama or papa thinks, you're afraid of what your sister, your brother thinks, or, or your grandpa, or your grandma, or your cousins, or whoever. But what truly matters is you. You are in possession of a gift. You have a talent, and whatever that talent is, you can make yourself and the people around you a stronger and better place with it. But sometimes, the only way to do that is to take a risk. At one point, you have got to take a leap if you wanna make that gift that you have become a reality. Otherwise, society will gladly accept you as a nine to five slave working just to pay off your rent and to stay alive and to live for the weekend, which is the absolute worst way to live. If you don't jump, believe me, if you don't pursue your gift, you will live a life full of regret and your gift, your dreams, everything that you ever had to offer to the world will die with you. From firsthand experience, 
I am pissed off at myself. I am pissed off and I regret so much in my life. I can't even fathom explaining it. Not about, not about what I've done, but what I haven't done. All the opportunities that I turned down and all the chances that I never took just because I was afraid or because I was worried about what other people think. And I officially decided to sit down. I sat down for weeks. I didn't, I didn't just think of what I'm saying right now. I didn't think of it overnight. This is months. This is months of thinking and I just sat down and I just wrote. And after comparing the randomness of death versus the chance of you failing while relentlessly pursuing your dreams versus the chance of you living a terrible life because you failed at pursuing your dreams versus just calling it a day right now and living a traditional Western world lifestyle versus everything you can think of versus absolutely everything. And I can gladly say that right now, as of this moment right here, I would rather live each day as if it were my last and take every risk possible in these sacred moments that I have on earth now to make myself as successful and happy as possible than to be sitting in my deathbed when I'm 90 years old regretting not taking a chance and thinking about what my life could have been if I just jumped when I was 18 or when I was 15 or when I was 22 because tomorrow is not a promise. I would rather die trying to live my dreams than to live a longer life filled with regret. Life is too short and too unpredictable to live it. I've seen it firsthand. It is not worth it to live it safe, basic, and traditional. But do you know why most people choose to live that, that safe life over taking risks in their life? I mean, there's a pretty good argument not to. Why, why would you? Why would you? take a risk that puts you through stress, puts your family through stress, makes you lose sleep, makes you lose time, makes you put in the extra work, makes you take ridiculous chances that are one to 1,000. You know, but before I even continue, the fact that I'm even sitting here and talking is astonishingly ridiculous on its own. The chance of you being born is one to 400 trillion. That number is so big, you cannot even wrap your head around it. But okay, what, what I wanted to say was that the reason why people don't want to take these risks is because right now they feel like they got a lot to lose and that their current situation is relatively nice and most importantly right now they are comfortable. They got used to living basic within society standards, being with their friends every now and then, being well rested. They got comfortable and when you get comfortable you don't want to move and that comfort zone, I like to call it the danger zone because th this comfort zone will persuade you to stay in there for as long as possible. And it is, I know, I know how it is. I know the comfort zone. It is so convincing. It is so hard to escape comfort. I know, and as it persuades you to stay in there, you will literally, unconsciously, see, I'm so serious when I say this, you will literally see your whole life go right by you. And the main reason that I'm serious about this now is because I am pissed off for greatness. I want to move mountains. And like Ray Lewis once said, if you're not pissed off for greatness, then you're okay with being mediocre. And I am definitely not okay with being average. And I don't think anyone should be. But anyways, to address why I'm even talking about any of this at all in the first place is because I recently got an offer to move out to Los Angeles, California to live with two other entrepreneurs as a content creator and media influencer. And it makes me sad because it's opened up my eyes to see what I truly have in store for me, what's waiting for me out there in the future. And it's just a tiny glimpse of what I'm capable of achieving within my short life. However, I doubt that I could get the right legal paperwork done in order to move to the US to work for a job such as YouTube, which is really not in control of the government. And the last thing that I wanna do is to go to the US to work in a legal job as an illegal immigrant. So as of this moment, I feel like I have to pass up yet another opportunity. And it makes me feel like I just keep letting my dreams slip from my hands once more. And now that I've seen the reality of what is possible, this house in LA next to the beach on California with a huge city, great weather, and working a job that I would absolutely love and live for with people who share the exact same dream and vision, it has me thinking like, hell yeah, I would gladly die chasing this dream relentlessly then never chase it at all and play it safe and being trapped within my own mind of thinking about what my life could have been. 
I hope to do more videos like this where I speak because they're really like a therapy for me and it helps me get my mind off things and hopefully some people can be influenced by what I'm actually saying. I would also like to say that I think education is extremely important and plays a crucial role into bringing success into your life and that knowledge is power. The best thing in life is to always have a backup plan and take into consideration what if something goes wrong and it's something that every role model that I look up to tries to enforce but I feel like education will always be here for me to come back to, whether I'm 20, 25, 40, or whatever. And I think that I have an amazing idea, vision, passion, and drive now in my peak and that I'm able to capitalize on, which makes me feel like I'm throwing it away if I don't pursue it. And the biggest response that I've been getting recently is, Marco, what if it fails? Which I mean, yeah, like, what if it fails? But that's the whole point of taking a chance with things like startup companies or entrepreneurship. It's ridiculously high risk. Like, what if I get hit by a car? What if I lose my wallet? Or better yet, what if this succeeds? You know, it's easy to be negative or to be closed-minded, but I think it's easier to be optimistic and to be open-minded. And please do yourself a favor, which is a separate topic on its own for another time, but try to surround yourself with people who impose and promote positivity and good vibes. You will notice the tremendous effect that it has on your lifestyle. Starting your own business or being self-employed, although preferable, doesn't exactly require any kind of diploma or degree. And I think that with a proper business plan and with the drive that people like you who are watching this video fuel me with, I feel like I can accomplish anything. If you're still listening, I love you, mad respect. That's true loyalty right there. If or less, this has been Marco. I hope you all have a great rest of the day and goodbye.